and stories inform us to what is possible. Stories influence us to what is needed. And stories inspire us to what could be. Stories happen when people live their life to the fullest. These are the storytellers. Podcast. I love those. There, there's a whole bunch of, it's like looking at a field of daisies to me. Yes. How do you pick the good one? Please share with us, because I would like to know, what do you like? Who do you like? Well, when I listen to, to podcasts, I, well, I watch, uh, Monique films her podcast. I watch their podcast every week. Um, I watch the Rubin Report that's on uh, um, Dr. Drew's podcast. I like to listen to him. Uh, there's there's a lot of them. A lot of with with podcasts too. A lot of them, I may not catch them every week, but I come back to them always, and I'm catching somebody else in between sometimes. Okay. You know, it's just, it just just depends on your schedule and what you're. Doing. I can't hand now. I always watch Monique. I will say that she's one that I and Dr. Drew. I, I try to and and um, but I listen. Uh, you know, a lot of just talk radio and so some of their talk, you know their podcasts I'll pick up. Uh, you know, and like their sidekicks. I don't always know their names, but they'll have podcasts, so I pick those up. Phil Valentine's coming up with a podcast. Yeah. the podcast Ghost. Yes, yeah. I, I, I listen to Phil Valentine almost every day. And, um, he and his Dan, son are doing that. Dan, really? Dan who? Uh, Dan Mendes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In the, earlier in the afternoon. These I are all Nashville people for those yeah. of you out of town. Yeah. This is good stuff for people yeah. that want to become an interviewer. Go back in history, yes. watch the old stuff. Yeah. And wouldn't it be, because you've got a field of daisy of 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, Yeah. wouldn't it be, as Malcolm Gladwell would say, I think, uh, or excuse me, Seth Godin, the purple cow, you got to be different. Yeah. What if someone came out with a half hour, we're only going to talk about this subject. Yeah, I think it would, I think it would, I think that the whole format even of the audience, the where they're in the audience, you notice no talk show, they're not going in the audience asking questions of the guests like they used to, like Phil and Oprah and all. They, there is a market for that. Because if there wasn't a market for that, there wouldn't be a Twitter. You know, everybody's on, right. you know, everybody wants to voice their concern. Their they opinion, want to right. be heard. They want to ask questions. But on Twitter, you're not going to always get the answers, but you can still spout off what you believe or what you want to know. That's why I believe that a show like that could exist today and do really, really well. It would have to have the, a really good host, you know, I, 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 it would have to be a little sensationalized, I think. But I think, excuse me, I think that you could really pull off something good, you know, good with that. If you have a, a, flam, a, a host with a little bit of a flair, you know, to them, and like a Geraldo, you know, because he did it before, you know. Uh, but that type of personality, you know, where they could bend and throw with the punches a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not talking about like a Jerry Springer, let's all fight, that kind of thing. But I think where people voice their concerns and ask, maybe it's their favorite celebrity even, they want to ask questions. You know, that's one thing I hate, is that when somebody interviews somebody now, it's the same questions that's been asked on every show. You know, it's just the five talking points. That, you know mm -hmm. they that they you know and a lot of them they don't want to go beyond that that's fine if that's what they want to do you just got to try to break them beyond that a little bit and my style is they leave looking better than I do you know I if you if you don't remember me then I've done my job if you remember that person you know which brings up an interesting point there might be some people watching this that would love to have a forum where they wouldn't have to number one be like everybody else the yeah. field of daisy yeah. or be afraid of being sandbagged yes yeah how would someone get in touch with mr nashville Larry uh, with me well uh, my website is mr nashville talks.com and uh our we have twitter mr nashville talks um instagram mr nashville talks 
and Facebook, Mr. Nashville. And so uh, I try to answer all of those. My email is on uh, uh, on my website, and uh, we're pretty good about talking back and forth with everybody. And um, so if you want to contact me, that would be the, the, the best. And, I, and I'll always, and if you don't hear back from me, there's something wrong. It's in the spam. Uh, so keep trying, you know, get back with me. Like you said, for the aspiring yeah. interviewers, yes. you might get 10 no's. Right. Keep on trying. Keep Not trying. necessarily the same person, right. but keep on going Keep going there. and ask people, um, you know, the, the one thing that is going to hurt a lot of these younger people is they've got to realize they're going to have to pick up a phone sometimes and actually have <laughs> verbal communication or walk up and hand a, a, a physical business card to someone somewhere. Uh, it, you know, make sure if you want to be an interviewer that you can talk to people in face to face and voice to voice on the phone. Uh, it is easy because of you know emails. You know you're probably going to get your best results through emails, but you're you're like I said, you have to circulate, you know, and and uh, meet people face to face. I have done as well as I've done in all my ventures, you know, that I've done in my pursued, all from meeting the people physical face-to-face -face contact real-time and contact telephone as well but real-time yes contact yeah. yes and and you know now email is important and all of that but I couldn't I couldn't just rely on email if I hadn't had that history behind me so maybe you know I, I think that um, I think that people have to be willing to to get out and sell themselves a little bit and just be friendly I think that's the main thing. If you're friendly to somebody, you dress a little different, something, you know, that they'll remember you, uh, and just uh, fit it, you know, be very uh, communicative. Um, and I think kindness goes a long way with people. And if, if you're, if you, maybe you, if it's somebody that you want to interview down the line, something bad happened, you've seen it all in the press or whatever, send them your, you know, your, uh, that you're thinking about them or praying for them or you hate that they're going through this. Just uh, communication and kindness goes a long way. But if you can't talk to somebody on the phone and you can't talk to somebody face to face, now there are people that can talk to a camera, but they can't talk to a human being. Uh, I can talk to the human being better than I can the camera, but um, they have to be willing to do that, I think, in order to really get somebody to be on their show. You bring up a very interesting point when you said kindness. It's mm -hmm. kind of been thrown around, but not really practiced. Uh, it brings to mind a lady that, uh, her name is Linda Kaplan Thaler and she owns the Kaplan Thaler Advertising Agency. Now, that probably doesn't mean anything to anybody, except it's the Kaplan Thaler Advertising Agency that came up with the Aflac Duck. Oh, really? But she wrote a book, and it's a very short book, but it's about business, and it's called The Power of Nice. It's a phenomenal book, and she has some real stories about the power of nice. And I'm just going to share one little thing and I want your comment on this. Sometimes, you know, she did big names and little names yeah. for advertising and marketing. And sometimes the, the bills, the uh, receipts receivable wouldn't come in in a timely fashion. And sometimes it'd be 60 or 90 days off. Instead of doing a dinning notice or getting the lawyer on the phone, you know what she would do? No. Bake a dozen brownies and put them in a package with the bill and then all of a sudden uh, more times than not she got the check <laughs> that's great now i might be tempted to pay my bill late just to get the brownies but uh, <laughs> <Good point. laughs> you know i'm working on losing my weight now but uh and and, and let me say something when you were asking me there's a lot of people who think they're so good looking that they would be great at doing something like this. Uh, it's not about just the looks. It's not about that, you know, well, I mean, look, 
I'm not anything to look at. But um, I know a lot of people that think they're beautiful. And they are. But that doesn't mean that you're, you need to pursue this. Just because you're beautiful doesn't mean everybody else wants to watch you and hear about you, you know, look at you. So it's more than just, just that. Now you don't, you want to go showing up, you know, clean and, you know, and, and know what you're doing, you know, when you're interviewing somebody. But, um, you know, don't show up uh, in a tuxedo, you know, to, to go to the barbecue. But, you know, there are people that think that just because they've been in pageants or uh, something like that, that they're, they need to get, you know, or that they've done makeup tutorials on YouTube, that they're ready to be a, a interviewer or host a show or be a comedian or whatever, you know, and they're not. I mean, you know, because it's more than just the aesthetic. You gotta have some, you gotta have some substance, you know. And like you said earlier, the research, um, a person, and name slips my mind, but she tells the story of getting to interview Warren Buffett. Oh, wow, yeah. Who is very hard to interview. You yeah. got maybe, maybe five minutes, boom. She did her research and showed up with Warren Buffett's favorite drink, which happened to be cherry Coca-Cola. <laughs> she came in with two cherry Coca-Colas, a glass with a, I remember the story. And, and he said, and an hour later, her interview was over. Oh, that's great. Isn't that neat? Isn't it? Well, to kind of go with your point, one of the people I interviewed, I had no, I wasn't even going to ask them because I, you know, I just really appreciated them and was going to see their show. And uh, I brought them some roses, you know, when you, and, uh, uh, it made an impression, you know, we had a little moment of talking, and I didn't even mention my show, didn't mention anything about me, just, I like, you know, appreciate your work, and I uh, posted a picture of us together with, you know, and I said, it was so great meeting this person, and I t tagged them, you know, in the picture, and I said, uh, she would be one I'd killed to interview, and she said, I'd be happy to do that interview. I hadn't even asked. I wasn't even talking to her. I was talking to my... Your audience. Yeah. And, um, and so that's how I got one of, one of the interviews. And that's, well, actually a few people as I've made contact with. Not that particular thing, but like I said, the kindness or just the physical meeting and all of that. But that one, that one uh, uh, really struck me. That, you know, you made that impression and you treated them with the respect that they deserve. And... You know they remember that, and then you you know you just and you just never know who's going to be. Um, you're going to get you know you're going to meet some jerks too that you know that might take your flowers and stomp on them you know. But uh, I think that uh, I think I think that uh, kind of like you know it goes all back to what you're saying. No, like you say, know who you're going to see or attempting to get an interview from or just being kind. I think those that you know they. It, it's 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 the chase of you know you got to know what you're chasing, and how to, how you know how to make that work in the best way. You know don't just approach everything as a now if you're having to deal with a bunch of publicists and all that kind of stuff, you need to be straightforward and very business like and all of that. And um, but if you're dealing with the artists themselves, you know be professional, but. They love, first of all, they love to be loved, so that's a good thing, and if you really, but make sure it's a genuine thing, don't lay it on thick, um, and, you know, so, yeah, I think that's, that was very bright. I would have done that. This is the way I really wanted to go to Cherry Coke. Interview Warren Buffett. Yeah. Tell our audience what you would recommend for people, just in general, they might not necessarily want to be an interviewer, mm -hmm. but I... I look at our culture right now <clears throat> and I feel like we're becoming unable to truly communicate. Mm -hmm. Would you please give us your gems on the communication aspect? We have this uh, where today where we talk at each other and I'm guilty of doing a lot of that as well. You see something you don't like and you're the first one to talk about how you don't like it. Now remember somebody can see that later and be very offended and you may not get that interview. Um, but I think that what you really, what's going on now 
in our culture is we don't care what the other person thinks. We don't care how, if we hurt that person's feelings. We don't even talk to that. It, it's the it's the destate. We, we have totally evacerated the human contact aspect. We don't look at people as humans. We look at them as a screen name. We look at them as as a, an email address. So what I think. And I, I've been guilty of that a lot. It's very easy to do. But we, we need to, to be able to have civil discourse and respect other people's opinions. But it doesn't know when to withhold your opinion. You know, I've interviewed people that, or, or even had conversations with people, who have a belief system so contrary to mine on some of my core values, they'll never know it because we have a lot of like things we agree on. I'm not going to combat them in an interview unless that's the type of show that it's supposed to be. But we don't always have to be right. You know, you know you're right. So sometimes it's like what mom said, you know, our grandmothers and everybody told us that sometimes you're the bigger person to walk away. Sometimes you're just the bigger person to not voice. You know, uh, that doesn't mean hold back who you are or or, but again, if you're interviewing someone or if you're just trying to make it, I think, up the ladder, just realize that you can be a strong, independent person, but if you're likable to, for the most part, they'll forgive some of your faux pas, and they'll, but just try to treat people good. That's the main, main thing. If you treat people well and you um, are likable, and you aren't abusive to people, I think that goes a long, long way. But start talking to people. Not just your opinions, ask what's on their mind. Their mind, yes. See how their day was. One of the greatest journalists ever, but he's known as an author first, but what is not often known about him, you know, we're talking about, I'm talking about Rudyard Kipling. Yeah, yeah. He had his six honest serving men mm -hmm. that he used as a journalist. Who, what, where, how, when, and why. And that would open up that book of that other person's life. Yes. And that's pretty much what you do, Mr. Nashville. Thank you. I Larry try. Ferguson, thank you so much for your time. Well, it was so valuable. And I you, enjoyed you it. You have given me a, a wealth of information in the audience. Well, thank you well, so much. Well, you're going to do great. I'm so proud of your show. For those of you out of town in Nashville, make a point of coming to the public library here. It's wonderful. You. You will also see murals all over the walls, enormous pictures of the history of Nashville. Really something to see. Go to my website, www.darrenmurphyseminars.com, and we have Instagram and YouTube. And don't forget my book, A Keys to Connecting, The Communication Code of Conduct, gives you the very specific skills and strategies that will make everybody you meet open up to you in a very profound way. Thank you so much.